what I'm going to share to you in this video is not something you were supposed to hear. Because a lot of things function more smoothly because people at the top make more money if this information is not widely available to the public in the dropshipping space. Because you've been lied to. And it's the same lie that I heard when I first started dropshipping over six years ago. And it's the same lie that keeps being preached today. And because I believed in it when I first started, the first nine months to a year of me dropshipping were a struggle where I tested over 20 plus products. I spent countless hours, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours on my dropshipping store. Yet the result after all that work was me losing $3,000 and going into debt and having to work at Publix like a brokey. And the reason why that ended up being the result for me and how I want you to not have to go through that fate again is realizing that I made the wrong decision of what to prioritize. Because when you are doing dropshipping, you are inevitably going to have issues. You're going to have problems. You are going to struggle to find your first winning product. You're going to struggle to create a winning website, ads, media buying, all that stuff is going to be a struggle for you, which makes sense because you haven't really done it before. And as entrepreneurs, I think we're really good at identifying and diagnosing when we have problems, but where we struggle is coming up with finding the right solutions. Because when I was struggling, when I first started, what I would always constantly look for, because this is what was taught to me is that I am one ad strategy, product research strategy, website strategy, one magic pill, quick fix away from solving all my problems. And of course that's appealing. Because why would I want to dedicate months to learning some sort of system and having to get good at skills when I can just have a quick fix that if I implement tomorrow, I can finally solve all the problems I've been having just like that at the snap of a finger. I don't know how to snap my fingers. I know I'm autistic. I didn't learn most basic motor skills. I had to go through speech therapy till I was five years old. And I would say when it comes to this big dilemma, of is it the ad strategy or is it me? 99% of the time, it's you. And that's not a very comfortable reality. It's not something that you want to admit because we have our ego tied into this because we've been putting so much hours into it. We've watched so many videos. And this is exactly why this phenomenon of why it doesn't matter how many YouTube videos you watch or courses, you always remain in the same place. No matter how much you invest into yourself and put all of this time into learning new information constantly, you're always stuck. You are running in place. And it's because you're making the wrong solution. You're choosing the wrong solution to the right problem. You know you have a problem, but you choose the wrong solution because the right solution isn't the sexy one. And the right solution, if you're wondering, because I know I've been blue ballsing you a little bit here, is you have to learn the skills. If you have a broken bone, you can't put a bandaid over it and expect it to heal. You have to go through surgery, then therapy and rehab, which takes months and months and months, but it is the only solution. You don't just band-aid it up and think it's going to be fixed tomorrow, but that's what people want. And while I do believe this whole argument of strategies versus skills, skills obviously is more important. There is also a very big need for the right strategies when you start. Because yes, you do need to know the fundamentals. You do need to have a strategy and a blueprint that you follow because you don't have one. So yes, it makes sense to obviously work with someone who can give you their blueprint and has made it work for themselves and has made it work for other people because then you know it's a repeatable blueprint. But the hard thing is that most people will try a blueprint. They know the blueprint works, but because it doesn't work for them immediately or because it doesn't work after a few weeks or a month or two, they try a completely new blueprint. They blame the blueprint that they saw has worked for others, but because it didn't work for them, they just think, okay, I have to scrap it. And that approach is why you're never going to be successful at dropshipping. Almost all strategies and blueprints that I've created and top dropshippers in this game that teach created work. They 
all work. The problem is you don't stick to it long enough to master the execution of that strategy so that you make money. And that's where the real million dollar solution is execution. And one of the best business lessons I learned from a mentor of mine named Dan Henry, I was 18 years old when I went to him and I started to have a little bit of success with my first dropshipping stores. And I went to him, wanted to get some good business strategy advice. And this cost me $10,000 to learn, but it was one of the best lessons I had learned, which is that in business, success boils down to two things. About 10% is strategies, 90% is execution. Because if I give 100 movie actors the same script, the same blueprint, my Leonardo DiCaprio, the one who's going to get that part for that script, is the one who executes it the best. It's not the blueprint that makes the man or the woman, because I'm not sexist. It's the execution. It's their skills. Because once you master the skills, it doesn't matter what strategy you're doing. It will always work. If I know how to create winning ads, it doesn't matter what media buying strategy, ABO, CBO, images, videos. If I know what a good winning ad is and I know how to create it, none of that stuff matters. If I know how to create a high converting website and I know the fundamentals, I know what makes people buy, I know what really gets people to convert, the different sections, the layouts, then it doesn't matter what theme I use or what apps I'm trying out, all those strategies and tactics. You want to just change your frame from I'm a tactic away or I'm a hack away or I'm a tip away to I am just need to, I just need to get good at the fundamentals. I just need to understand what are the skills that lead to results. Because if I focus on developing my skills and iterating and improving every single day, and while it does take time, after a few months, I will get to the point where my skills are developed enough to make any strategy work and to the point where I will attract money. Money will come to me because I've developed my skills and focused on the right things instead of just solely making money. Because the wrong feedback loop is just saying to yourself, okay, the strategy is valuable. The strategy is working if I'm making money. And I know that seems counterintuitive because obviously we're optimizing for money. But if you want to optimize for money long-term instead of short-term, if you want to make money for years and not just a few days, you optimize for skills instead of the quick strategies. Because I see it all the time where people will try a new strategy they don't know why they're trying it out. They don't know the fundamentals. They don't know what I need to get good at to actually master that strategy. They just copy and paste from a video willy nilly without a thought in their mind. And then if it works, awesome, but they don't know why. If it doesn't work, they don't know why. And obviously, if you don't have a full grasp on why you're doing something, then you're never going to be able to scale. You're never going to be able to take your business and take whatever you learned and improve and iterate and get even better with it because you don't even know why you're doing it in the first place. And that's what I see when you get strategy dependent and you think it's all about the strategy. And I, I get that's what you've been taught because it's not sexy if I'm selling a course or a coaching program, which, hey, I do offer. I do coach people. I've been coaching for over four years. I've seen so many students who come from other programs and think, okay, Ethan, I'm joining because I, I heard you're the TikTok ad guy. That's what I'm missing. I just need some new strategies and hacks. And it's like, no, 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 my friend. No, 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 no. It's your skills. You're missing the four key skills. Product research, website and offers, ad creatives, and media buying. That's why you're not successful, my friend, not the strategies. In fact, in most cases, when you're watching this video right now, you have more than enough strategies, information, and videos you've watched to be successful. You have an abundance of information in that giant noggin of yours right now that is enough for you to be successful and hit 100K, 500K, a million. There are people dumber than you that know less about dropshipping. They're making more money than you right now because they have an action bias instead of a learning bias. They take action while you just keep learning, 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 and tricking your brain into that's me making progress. Making progress isn't learning new strategies. Making progress is action, execution, and getting better with the strategies you've learned. And the only way you get better at the strategies you've learned is practice, practice, repetition, repetition, days into weeks into months of iterating and improving. And I'd say a big reason also, why you shouldn't be strategy dependent either is because if you really think about it, even two years ago, 
the strategies that were working back then, do they still work now? Do people still use the same product research tools that they were using back then? No. In fact, TikTok ads were so new back then. Almost no one was even using it. Now it's become mainstream. Strategies on Facebook that were working two years ago for testing and scaling, completely out the window now. Broad is taking over and all that stuff. And maybe a year or two now, it could be something completely else. Those are always evolving and adapting and changing. But what never changes is you have to get good at the skills and execution of dropshipping. That's the real big thing you need to do. <clears throat> but I think what will be difficult for you guys though, is if you have learned a blueprint, and this is what happened to me, just going back to my situation, because this is all about me. I'm egotistical. This is my channel at the end of the day. And honestly, I know you're watching this right now and you're probably also on your Instagram or you're scrolling through your dating app. Cut back to me. Look at me in the eyes. Look at these steel green eyes. I'm like Medusa, making you rock hard and not in the way you're thinking, buddy. In the situation I had, basically, after nine months, I had tried a bunch of different strategies out. I was hopping. I was jumping. I was a goldfish with shiny object syndrome. I finally invested into a mentor, Noah Brewer, and he taught me his blueprint and he taught me his way of doing things. And I realized because of the amount of money I invested, I had to stick with it. And obviously that's another thing as well. If you're only learning from free content and really shitty low value courses, you obviously don't have as much commitment to those ideas because you don't value them as much because you only value them typically by the amount you paid for that information. If I paid $50 for something versus a thousand, I'm obviously going to stick and be more committed to that a thousand dollar strategy. So with Noah, I paid him around $1,500. This was four or five years ago, a month to learn from him. So I knew Whatever he teaches me, I'm going to do, and I'm going to try to get amazing at. And once he taught me what he did, and he looked at my store, and he looked at what I was doing, he instantly spotted 20 different things I could improve on my website just by the fundamentals. He told me, why are you using that theme? Why are you using that? You need to be focusing on these things. In fact, he didn't say, you know, that theme is bad or that tool is bad. He just said, what are you actually doing? Like, why are you doing it the way you're doing it? Because this is what actually matters. Having better social proof, more urgency, looking for products that have this type of criteria. Because if you know how to do those things, then it doesn't matter what tool you're using because you can instantly spot winners on any platform. The platform doesn't matter. If you know what makes a winning website, then it doesn't matter what product you're selling because you already know how to optimize to market that product on the website. It's the skills that pay the bills. But it's not the quick and sexy solution. Because when you have a problem, we tend to overreact. We tend to want to overcorrect. And as the captain of your own ship, I, I get it. I, I truly do. When you set a course for a certain destination and everything is smooth sailing and then you suddenly hit that iceberg where you're having some rough, rough waves, you're left with the decision of, do I keep going? Do I keep persevering? Do I stay on course? Is this the right course of action or do I redirect? Do I go back home? And most people in that situation decide to redirect. They change the strategy. Once they get a little bit of resistance, they say, okay, new strategy. Because that's the quick and easy fix. When the real solution is doubling down and beating that resistance, trusting what you've learned. But how do you develop that trust? It's really about just having faith in that mentor or person you've originally learned from because you really should just stick with one blueprint in the beginning. And then once you get good and you have a firm grasp on the skills of dropshipping and you understand what works in each area, then you can start iterating and taking bits and pieces from other people. But in the beginning, you have to put your faith into one person, into their blueprint, into their methods, then try to execute the skills along with it. That will make the execution of those strategies flawless. So you kind of have to really trust the blueprint, especially when things are going wrong and you're not making sales. And that's why your feedback loop can't be money because if it's just money, after a month or two of not seeing success, you're going to dip. You are going to try something new and that's not the right answer, unfortunately. It's kind of like if I wanted to be successful and I had four different hobbies I was interested in 
And let's say my first hobby is piano because I got these giant alien fingers. You can only imagine what you can do with these bad boys, but you can do some good piano playing. I mean, I got that thing in the back. I haven't touched it in months. And if I wanted to be successful and I said, okay, let me try piano first. And I tried it for four weeks. I got the fundamentals down. I knew what skills I needed to learn, but I wasn't at a professional level where I was successful. What do I do? Do I keep trusting my training and stick with it for years? Is that the best option to hit my goal? Or is it, okay, I've had some resistance. I'm not learning. I'm not at where I want to be. And it's been a few weeks or it's been a few months. Let me go to my next hobby that could potentially make me successful. Let me do fishing. Let me try to do that. Okay, now I'm going to do fishing. It's been four weeks. I learned how to do fishing this one way, but I'm still not catching as many fish as pro fishermen. What, why is that? It must be the strategy. Okay, let me learn a new way of fishing. Let me try some new bait. Let me try some new equipment. That's got to be what it is. It's not me. It's not my skills. It's not my execution. It's, it's the strategy. It's the equipment. It's like a... It's like if I'm a baseball player and I'm not hitting the ball. Like, I know there's a problem. It's the same thing as you as a dropshipper right now. You know there's a problem. You know you can't find a winning product, but you blame it on the wrong thing. You come to the wrong conclusion on, on what the solution is. That baseball player is going to say, oh, I need new equipment. I need a new baseball bat. I need new gloves. That's why I can't hit the ball. And it's like, no, you just haven't put enough practice in. Your skills aren't there yet. Your talent isn't there yet because you haven't put in the work. It's never the equipment. It's never the strategies. It is always always, always the unsexy answer of a lack of skills. And that is what is preventing you from success. And the only answer to the solution of you not being successful at dropshipping, if you want to be successful, the solution is you have to put months to years of practice on one fundamental core blueprint and understand why that blueprint is the way it is. Because if you don't know why, then once that blueprint does get outdated and those strategies do get outdated, then you're screwed. Because if you are solely strategy dependent, exactly that's what happens. It gets outdated and you don't know how to evolve because you don't know why you were doing it in the first place. And I see, unfortunately, a lot of my students now where I have to unteach them certain things where they, because they are just so loyal and they've went all in where, okay, but my last mentor told me I have to build websites with this theme. I have to do this. And I asked them, why? Why do you do it that way? Well, it's because I was taught. They are basically Nazis just following orders. They don't know why they are doing something. They don't know why an ad works. They just know, okay, I've been taught. I have to make my ads with hooks this long. Or I have to do ABO. I have to do CBO. But it's like, why? You don't understand the deep philosophies behind why you are doing that. Therefore, you can't think for yourself. And if you can't think for yourself... Then again, once those strategies die, you won't be able to iterate. You won't be able to come to the right conclusions. And in business, I would argue the two most important things as an entrepreneur to be successful is speed and quality decision-making. If you can execute the right quality decisions, you will be successful. And a lot of you are good with speed, but you make the wrong decisions. And again, that's why in a lot of cases, having a mentor who has been through your shoes and has seen thousands of other people have gone through your exact situation and knows what the right solution and decision-making is, is really beneficial because then you can only focus on the speed and you know the decision making is being handled by your mentor i'll see if there's really anything else i think honestly that's all i want to really cover today so if i was to summarize i would say learn the strategies and fundamentals first get great at the four skills of websites media buying ad creatives product research once you get those down, ideally try to work with the person who came up with your blueprint one-on-one so they can coach you and give you talking points and give you feedback on what you've been doing so that you can really master those skills and evolve to that next level. And I would say finally, if you can change your feedback loop from am I making money to okay, from test one to test 20, how much have I improved my skills in terms of my product selection, my websites over time, my ads, how much has that improved? Because if I keep improving, I keep getting better, and I went from product test 1.0 to product test 20.0, it will get there to the point where it is almost inevitable that I can make any product a winner. And that is what I would focus on. If I was someone who's right now in the ringer, not seeing any success, and doesn't know what to focus on, because that's what it truly takes. 
And before I end this video, Super Bowl just ended. I mean, look at this Browns jacket. I'm absolutely sweating and the dogs are barking. But I was really hoping to end after the Chiefs won. Travis Kelsey would see Taylor Swift running to him. He would try to greet her with a hug. But instead of hugging, she went up to him, Taylor, and slapped him in the face and said, that's what you get for nearly losing. And then she brings him in, kisses him, and says, that's what you get for winning. We all knew it was scripted anyways. All right, have a good one. That's your Monday lesson. Hopefully you now learn skills and execution over strategies, my friend.